uh, thanks a lot. Let me share my screen. Please confirm somehow that you, you see my screen. Is it available? Yeah, we see it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, let me say a few words about myself. First, my name is Pavel Belsky, yeah, and I'm solution architect. And uh, I used to work uh, with SAP development for more than 10 years. Uh, yeah, and now I'm working in uh, S4HANA implementation project. And next project, it will be pure uh, BTP development uh, solution. Yeah, and today I want to, to share some tips and tricks uh, with writing custom application using using RAP. Yeah, let's go ahead. Uh, today's agenda will be in six parts. Uh, review the basics, then uh, data modeling, business service and provisioning, service consumption. Uh, we will have a look into one use case and maybe uh, q and session will be available for us. Okay, let's start. As this is a pretty, pretty well-known slide. Uh, if you interested in RAP, in RESTful Application Program Model uh, before, this is uh, SAP slide that if we talk about RESTful Application Program Model, we do have three layers. As a first layer, this is a data model and behavior layer. As the next layer, this is a business services and provisioning layer. And the next and the third layer, last one, as this is a service consumption. Today, we will be mostly focused on data modeling and business services provisioning layers. And just one, uh, one point what I uh, noticed today before just uh, preparation to this session that this square was updated uh, in SAP last year. And this is pretty interesting. Why I asked myself and the answer was pretty clear that some code in above and some uh, code and comments in business definition or in the CDSs uh, affect uh, or data services. That's why uh, SAP includes this rectangle to business service provisioning as well. Before this rectangle was not here, all uh, all related business objects was only on data modeling and behavior layer. Let's move on. Yeah, as, as I said, we will be focused on data model and business service and service consumption. <laughs> Sorry, let's start with data modeling and behavior. Uh, if you talk about data modeling, the first simple example, what we can face uh, with RAP, this is, it might be pretty simple scenario, uh, a read mode, for example, application or read mode services. And for, for it, we need just uh, to have a table and uh, to have a uh, CDS with the root CDS on top of it, and then we can expose the service, create a service definition, and this is pretty simple. And that's it, I will not uh, focus a lot for it. Service definition, explosion, yeah, and like four steps, table, CDS, definition, explosion. Uh, what is more, not maybe not more interesting, but sometimes uh, not just read data via CDSs from the tables, but as SAP said, we need to read data from third party systems, but it might be not only from third party systems, but maybe uh, from another, yeah, scenarios, we will uh, have a look on it. We can create a custom entity. Custom entity, it means that your crude create, read, update, delete scenario, you will implement yourself. And you define custom entity, you define a structure for it. And <coughs> sorry, the backend and the logic 
for this custom entity, you implement in a class. When you define a custom entity, you write that uh, object model query implemented by, and you write a class name, and you create this class and implement the logic inside this class. And this is uh, from, from time to time pretty uh, a lot of it's required a lot of efforts, but I guess custom entity it's like some workarounds. Yeah, when you need, uh, as I said, to read data from sort party systems, or you need to implement a, a difficult logic, or you want to to uh, use barpies, or in case of uh, reading data from hashed or from archive. You also require a custom entity. It's not enough just to read, uh, to fill in your data using CDSs and read data from tables. Yeah, uh, a short summary. You you should define your custom entity, define a class where the logic will be implemented, and write implementation inside the class. One more point, one more uh, scenario when uh, we can face with this is a table function. Uh, table function, uh, it's a scenario when we want uh, to create a CDS uh, based on uh, IMDP procedure. Yeah, you define uh, this is a CDS is we select from uh, a table function and table function you also define uh, a class and a method and inside this method you write a logic uh, to read data using IMDP procedure. Uh, IMDP procedure uh, used might be used to read data from uh, your your schema uh, above, above schema in your uh, in your HANA yeah to improve your performance it might be uh, used to read data from another schemas or what was in uh, current scenario it was created to read data via SDA uh, from another HANA uh, via SDA we used virtualization here and uh, it was uh, nice solution from my end. Uh, to use table function, yeah, we uh, how we use it, we create the CDS is on top of uh, table function. We define table function with class and method, and we write a logic inside the method uh, inside IMDP procedure. From time to time, one more scenario we want to use virtual elements virtual elements we uh, we add an element in our cds uh, and the logic for this virtual element uh, we write in a class what we need we need to uh, declare that this this field will be virtual element yeah here we define annotation virtual elemented virtual element is calculated by and define a class and inside the class and the method of calculate method we write a logic to calculate these virtual elements uh, yeah from time to time it's required in uh, maybe uh, Sorry. Yeah, it's a summary for virtual element declaration and implementation, pretty simple. And before I will start to talk about a limitation, in reality, in production, uh, in production environment, in production project, we, uh, we work and we use different approaches in, in, it might be used different approaches in, in one application on a, a data modeling layer. 
Yeah, it's not just keep your mind open and keep in mind that you can define your data model uh, not only using CDSs, yeah, but also you can create a custom entity for CDS. You can create a table function and virtual elements. And using all these approaches, all these functionality, all these possibilities, it might give you big flexibility and uh, functionality. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to limitations and talk about it. Yeah. <clears throat> if you talk about a CDS view entity uh, based uh, on top of tables, this is the most common scenario and uh, this is the most developer friendly scenario i mean that the paging sorting filtering and sourcing on, on a ui and uh, in case of managed scenario is out of the box in case of unmanaged scenarios uh, it should be implemented but it's supported yeah uh, in case of custom entity, yeah, it's only unmanaged scenario is supported, yeah, and uh, all these functionality, paging, sorting, filtering, and searching should be implemented by developer, yeah, self-realization. For table functions, uh, we can only, uh, it works for read-only mode, yeah, because it's IMDP, and IMDP, we only can read yeah and the rest functionality it works out of the box uh page and sorting filter and searching yeah virtual elements uh paging it works because paging works uh, on on top on the level of cdss maybe it's not obligatory to to put here out of the box yeah but it's not for virtual elements and attention that sorting, filtering, and searching, it's not supported. And virtual elements uh, for read-only scenario as well. Yeah, and there is this, uh, a link yeah, to SAP help yeah, that there are limitations for virtual elements. And like, it's logical yeah, that it's not supported because they are virtual okay let's let's move on this is what's a data modeling part uh, let's move to the next topic and this is business service provisional layer and what we can do here uh, the first scenario the first approach as it was with data modeling it the most common approach and more uh, developers must often use it yeah this is when we implement CRUD, create read update delete functionality and manage and unmanage scenarios to implement it uh, we need first on the behavior implementation layer write uh, write a code statements and so on behavior projection as well in case some logic is required we will write this logic in uh, implementation class yeah we define this class in a behavior implementation yeah this is managed scenario implementation in class and in a class we write a logic necessary for this business object and it's this uh this crude yeah manage uh consistent three steps behavior implementation behavior projection and logic implementation uh sounds pretty simple in reality as well uh, not so complicated and uh, as i said most uh scenarios and most developers use uh this approach let's have a look on uh next not not approach but functionality on a current layer validations and determinations uh, our app model uh support 
uh, validations and determinations. Like we know that Bob uh, is a successor for App, it was there as well. And uh, if you want to define and uh, to implement validations or determinations, we first um, define on a behavior definition layer, then uh, implement this validation in a class. Yeah, what I mentioned that in the behavior definition, we de define, declare implementation class for, for this uh, object and uh, validations and determinations are written also in implementation class in the logic. And on a UI, it might be uh, looks like like this that uh, we write a product group ID number six, and um, we can get an error message uh, without UI development. And you can see product group six doesn't not exist. Yeah, we we implement on a background uh, check uh, what group IDs exist in the database. And six is not exist. And the summary, yeah, to implement validations and determinations, we have like three layers. We have definition, logic implementation, yeah, and on the UI it might be looks like 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 this. Next, what is available for us uh, on the behavior layer? This is actions. As well, actions we define actions on a uh, behavior implementation level behavior definition layer and we implement the logic uh, for this in implementation class as well pretty pretty similar and on ui uh, on a ui it might be looks like a button on a list report or it might be looks like a button uh, on a um, object page uh, and one more point of uh, to be visible button on a uh, list report object page, we need to write uh, annotations in a consumption CDS. If not, it will be not visible for end users. And in my past, yeah, in my past experience, sometimes we used to create some actions for it. Uh, for several reasons, maybe it will be used uh, in APIs uh, to communicate as interface with uh, other systems, or it might be used to trigger some actions uh, from other uh, business objects or from other above code, and it's not not it will be not visible. Yeah, uh, I mean that UI visualization for actions is optional. Okay, let's move on. Field control. On the behavior level, it's also possible a field control when we want to control uh, and to communicate with end users and uh, and depends on uh, values in the fields. Uh, we do a flexibility and uh, Okay, let's say we do flexibility and cooperation on the UI with end users. We declare field control in behavior definition and we implement a logic in implementation class in a special method, get instance features. And uh, on the UI, it might be looks like, like here. We create a logic depends on uh, packaging mode a field and in case ssp uh, packaging mode two fields are hide it uh, hide it and one field is not editable this is might be implemented using field control okay okay to sum up yeah uh, pretty pretty similar sum up on a behavior level we need to define what you want to to implement uh i don't know 
validations, determination actions, or in our case, field control, we implement the logic and it might be visible on a UI. Next, next topic, what I wanted to talk with you, this is authorization. Uh, this is a schema uh, for authorization uh, in S4 uh, on top of big rectangle on top of it. This is a launch part. Uh, and below, above, we have a authorization concept for S4. And what is related to, to RAP uh, specifically, uh, this is like light blue rectangles. Uh, I mean, service definition, behavior definition, behavior implementation, and in data definition, access controls. I mean, particular behavior definition, behavior implementation, and access control, what we are working with in, in RAP. Yeah? I remember, uh, let's, let's move on and talk first with data definition and access controls. The, by the way, the only uh, we can create an access control for a particular CDS. And uh, remember that we talk in the beginning that uh, data modeling using CDS, is, this is common approach and uh, we used to work with this and using uh, access controls, we can filter data, filter data for the end users. Mm -hmm. Okay, and in case we want to implement uh, more complex uh, logic, more complex uh, authorization, it might be implemented via court or it might be implemented uh, partially uh in a behavior definition uh, in using authorization master it might be instance or global or uh, in case we use implementation class uh, to implement logic it's a classical way uh, to define uh, to, to implement authorization uh, using authority check statement yeah it's also parsable and uh, you can check Roles uh, using above code and uh, trigger uh, error messages to your UI. Yeah, let's back. Yeah, uh, again, there are uh, two places, two places where we uh, check authorization for our end users in case we work with RAP access controls and uh, in behavior definition and behavior implementation logic. No layer, this one. Uh, service consumptions or UI examples. In my past, the main issue, uh, what we faced as a developer, <coughs> as a development team, when we go to s 4 implementation, this is uh, to educate end users and to educate consultants, uh, theory guidelines and a few other elements capabilities according to SAP guidelines. Uh, a few other elements in development uh, should be preferable than SAP UI 5 freestyle development on the UI. And again, the main pain point that so many, uh, not, not so many, so few consultants, uh, okay, maybe it's uh, strong word, but not, let's say, not all consultants know uh, Fiori, at, uh, know Fiori well, and uh, just a few consultants, I would say, can uh, compare and know differences and know what might be implemented using Fiori elements and what might be implemented uh, using SAP UI5 freestyle. Yeah, and uh, this is a pain point, I would say, and it's important. Yeah, okay. Uh, on a UI using wrap, we can create list reports and object page, 
And here, some screenshots that on a list report, we can add some, uh, some kind of traffic lights, um, some colors. On a list report, we also can add grouping. Uh, the only, I would say, pain point here for, for grouping on list report, it's available only on an audited V2. Uh, it's a flexible layout. We can see in one screen list report and object page as well. Uh, again, some traffic lights, some status colors, colors. We can create using annotation some charts on list reports, column charts. Oh, I don't remember this name of chart. Uh, and also navigation is possible from this report to, to another application. Uh, overview, overview page, um, badly known, yeah, for embedded analytics uh, in SAP. Uh, from my point, by developers and by consultants, uh, eighty or ninety percent, or even more. Uh, everything is covered by, uh, if we, if you talk about fewer elements, I would say, uh, 80, 90% list report and object page. And the rest is, is OVP, OVP page with charts and navigations and filters. And, uh, the charts are, uh, adopted to filters in the filter bar and ILP analytic list page. Uh, this is for embedded analytic as well. Uh, you can see here uh, three main uh, sections. Uh, again, badly known uh, from developers and from consultants from my point of view. Uh, the first section, this is, sorry. <coughs> this is a filter section. And uh, it might be uh, filters, might be uh, using visual filters. Yeah, and visual filters, you can uh, see this uh, donut charts or bar charts or line chart. Uh, in case you click some, some, some dots or some, some parts, maybe we will have time at the end, I will show you. Uh, it will affect to the table behind. Also, in the middle of the section, we, we, we see uh, a chart section and uh, more than 10 type of charts are available uh, from the scratch and user uh, can create his chart using cell service. Yeah, this is like a cell service application and create uh, and user can save this variant for this chart using variant and Below part, yeah, the sort part, this is uh, analytical table part. Uh, it's uh, supported uh, grouping as well and subgrouping and uh, summarizing. And again, uh, the disadvantage of LP, it's only supported uh, on DTV2. Okay, let's go. Uh, a small example what we used to create in my current project we create uh, for stock reconciliation uh, we create uh, two applications and using sda we we, we read data from dw and uh, to do s4 uh, snapshot for for stocks daily we we, we have job via sda this data it gets to be double the stored in big w the historical data and in s4 we we just using virtualization display this data yeah okay again uh for our case for stock reconciliation we created we created uh two applications here we have actions we have analytical table use grouping uh, it was unmanaged scenario. 
Mm. Yeah, as I said, we we used to use table function to read data via the data from BW historical data. And as it's it. Okay, uh, now is a Q and A time for Q and A. Uh, I prepared also some useful links for Fiori elements. If some, someone will be interested in, it's mostly uh, SAP uh, SAP pages. Not something special. Everything that you need. Uh, SAP is provided to us. Okay, Sh Shoren, maybe some some questions are for the session. Uh, just let me check. I think there is no, no, not that much. No, it's fine. Um, thank you very much for your talk. So we are almost two minutes of a three minutes short break. Then we come to our meet speaker session and then we can do some questioning uh, and so on for uh, closing the session. I, I think maybe one question, but that's the, the classical one uh, about long text. <laughs> <laughs> for, for long text, uh, we, we used to use uh, custom objects. <laughs> <laughs> No way, no way. Yeah, we are waiting for an official, I don't know, CDS functionality up from SAP that is able to actually expose read and write long texts. But yeah, as I mentioned, when I used to, to talk about uh, custom objects, in case uh, we want to read some hash to zip uh, archive data, custom objects is only one way. Yeah, yeah, because CDS cannot unpack or read hash data. Yeah, maybe maybe Dominic or Stefan can uh, announce uh, long text support. There, there, there will be uh, another solution that is uh, uh, at the moment in development. I heard about that's also really nice for accessing, for example, uh, other data from other systems. All right, we will so we will see. thank you very much. So I'll. Um, then switch the pres the mode from the presentation mode <laughs> to our um, meet the speakers.